right, so everyone, welcome to our webinar from the Maryland School for the Blind Bookshare Overview for Teaching with Visually Impaired by Allison Hanker. Um, if you look in the chat box, you will see um, several links. One of them is a link to a survey. If you can please take that survey um, to let us know, you know how we're doing. And you will also be provided with a certificate for contact hours for attending. Um, but you have to fill out a survey to do that. <laughs> do that. I also have a list of upcoming free webinars um, that are on there. So feel free to sign up, let people know about them. And um, we're really open to suggestions. Um, this was actually suggested by a TBI. So if there's something you want to know about that we haven't had a webinar on, please let us know. All of our webinars are recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. That is the Maryland School for the Blind. So if you subscribe, it'll tell you every time we have a new webinar posted. Um, if you have a question during, at any point during the presentation, feel free to type it in the chat box. And I will let Allison know. Um, and so I'm handing it over to Allison. Thank you so much for doing this, Allison. Thank you. I heard a comment from the text chat that the audio is kind of soft and muffled. And I was noticing that too, but I assumed it was just my um, setup over here. So are, am I coming across soft and muffled also? If anybody wants to text chat or respond, let us know. Sounds good here. Great, great, great. Oh, perfect. Okay, Sandra says she's hearing me better. Fantastic. Oh, Ashley, you're muted. Your audio, um, your audio is muted. Um, I saw that in the participants list. Um, there should be an option in your Zoom. Let me see, I can fix it. Oh, thanks. Ashley, oh, hmm. No, she, she's not muted, just her camera's off. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure why you can't hear anything. Um, well, maybe, you know, because might want to text her, uh, might want to text her because she didn't, I think. Because yeah. I think what it was, she hearing. couldn't hear anything because we actually weren't doing anything at that point. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. All yeah. right. Let's I'm gonna so. check All right. All right. Good deal. Good, good, good. Um, and how is the video, guys? I know I'm supposed to line this up by looking in this uh, camera. But when I look at the camera, I'm not seeing yeah, anything. Yeah, so. don't worry about it because it's mainly what shows up at the PowerPoint. Okay, good, good. So I was mostly showing the PowerPoint then. I can live with that. All right, so I want to make sure that um, everybody is seeing what they need to see and hearing what they need to hear. So glad we're on the same page. So thank you, um, Kachita, for inviting me to speak today. I, oh, Ashley might still not be hearing us. Um, so, all right, I'm going to. Uh, move forward here. So my name is Allison Hilliker, um, as you mentioned, and um, I appreciate having a chance to talk to everyone today. I work doing customer support for Benetech, and um, Benetech is a Silicon Valley nonprofit that run, runs several projects that use technology to meet unmet social needs. And um, she, um, Sorry, Ashley seems to, she's still texting in the text chat saying she's not, not getting the audio. In any case, so Benetech is a Silicon Valley nonprofit that uses technology to meet unmet social needs. And one of our um, several projects that we do is the website, bookshare.org. And so Bookshare, if we look at our, our first slide about what is Bookshare, um, so Bookshare, first of all, it's a, it's a website, bookshare.org. And on this site, we host an online library. Um, it's a website um, where we host an online library of accessible um, books for people with print disabilities. And um, so people can sign up for memberships to Bookshare. People, um, it's meant for people with qualifying print disabilities. And print disability is not a term used much outside of copyright law. Bookshare is legal thanks, thanks to um, various US um, copyright laws, but the definitions of who qualifies um, varies from what you might see typically in an education 
law or an IEP or a 504 or an ISP, any of those uh, terms may be a little different. So the gist of, the, of what that means and who qualifies is people who have disabilities that affect their ability to read standard print, which is usually any type of blindness or low vision or visual impairment, anything that affects your ability to see enough that you can't um, effectively see to read standard print. Um, that's probably the uh, uh, demographic that we're most working with here today, but also in those who, among those who qualify are people with learning disabilities that affect reading, which is typically dyslexia, and then also physical impairments that prevent one from holding a book and turning a page. So that's the, the broad overview of who would qualify. And um, sure. Allison, if you can tell me when you go to the next slide, that one I know. I know what sure, sure. I'm actually, that's a good point. I was just about to say that. Great minds think alike. So um, that's kind of what book, what Bookshare is. Um, I'll just finish up that by saying, so you would join Bookshare at bookshare.org. And I'll go into a little more of that, the types of accounts available later. Um, but that's just, you know, getting the basic overview of what Bookshare is. Okay, you can go to the next um, slide, please. We should be on cost. Is that what you're seeing, everyone? What yeah, we're on we? cost. Yeah. We're on okay, cost. perfect. Good deal. All right. So cost. So Bookshare is free to U.S. students. And that's a very broad category. That's because the um, U.S. Department of Ed, Office of Special Education Programs, OSIP, they have funding subscriptions for U.S. students. So that, that means that any of your students, um, regardless of their grade level, whether they're in preschool, they're in college and university or in Hadley or training centers, all the different options I have there, um, different students of any age um, within the U.S. Uh, can get Bookshare for free. And then also the schools and districts who serve them can also um, qualify. Um, for free subscriptions to Bookshare. And then um, non-students or uh, people living internationally, um, the subscription is $50 a year for um, unlimited access to our over 700,000 books. So not a bad deal if you're um, having to pay for it, but thankfully your students will not. All right, so that's where we are with cost. Um, next slide, please. All right, so types of books, what's available. Um, as you can, um, as the slides say, there's a lot of wide variety of books. We have over 700,000 books, as I mentioned. We have both textbooks and um, recreational materials. We have um, a lot of different um, categories of books, a lot of different career resources, and we have some newspapers and periodicals. So. We have a little bit of everything in our collection, but most importantly to um, those of you who are work in classrooms or working with students is that we have a mix of textbooks and also a wide, wide variety of children's and young adult books, um, recreational reading as well. So um, that's pretty much what there is about that. I'm gonna go to the next slide, please. Actually, I'm gonna pause real quick before I go into devices, which is our, our, our next thing. I wanna do real quick with this basic overview of Bookshare. Do I have any getting started kind of questions about this, this just with this quick um, quick intro, do I'm gonna pause for a question before I keep going. Okay, I will assume it is clear as mud. <laughs> All right, so devices. Um, our books are essentially ebooks, which meant that they're not hard copy books. We're not mailing anything out. We're not sending you a large print, um, huge volume or several hard copy braille volumes. What we are is we're ebooks that are electronic that you can either read online or download to a device. Um, you can read on a variety of different computers, whether it's a PC, a Mac, or a Chromebook. Um, you can also read on tablets, whether it's um, iPad or Android or Kindle Fire. Uh, we can also have, read our books on different smartphones. Uh, they're again, iOS or Android. We also work on a various assistive tech products like the um, 
the different braille note taking devices, the digital players like the Victor Reader Stream also play on um, the, some of the uh, magnification devices like the Mac Connect and the Prodigy. Um, this different, most of the assistive tech tools that can read text um, can also read our books. So that makes it very versatile. Um, so pretty much whatever device your students are going to be using in school or at home, there's some way to read our books on the, those devices. So um, with that, we'll go to the next slide, please. All right, so there's two ways to sign up for Bookshare. The first one I'm mentioning here is organization because um, typically, um, if you're working in a classroom, if you're a teacher or you're assistive, an assistive tech specialist um, or you work in some other way for a school or a district, you'd want to sign up your um, school for an organization account. What that, and that is, there again, that is free in the US. Um, you'd sign up either your school or your district or if you have maybe a special education co-op, however your state likes to parse those things out, you can sign up on bookshare.org. You sign up essentially two categories of people. You first start with a primary contact, which is the primary staff member at your organization who's going to manage the account. For after that, you sign up sponsors, which are any other teachers or staff members or therapists or specialists who want to be, you know, who work with students and will need to get them books. So you'll sign them up as sponsors. That's our word for staff. And then members is our word for students, and that's the students you'd sign up. Um, on your organization's account. Um, and from there, the sponsors or teachers will manage the uh, books and the accounts for the members who are their students. And from there, you can, you can download books for students. You can create what we call reading lists, which are lists of uh, recommended books that you assign to your students. You can create usernames and passwords for your students so that they can access the books you share with them um, when you're not with them they can they can access them a little more um, independently and um, you can basically just manage um, the different lists of what you can subscribe to other reading lists we have some publicly available reading lists of recommended reading for students um, and you can share those with your students so basically that is for you to help your students gain access through your school or your district. That is often the easiest and most efficient way for teachers to do book share. However, we can move on to the next slide and I'll talk about another way to access book share. So if you want to uh, get to the next slide, the individual memberships. So um, if we have any parents on here, I thought I saw um, a parent or two. Um, if for some reason you want to sign up outside of your school or your district, you can do that. You'd sign up for an individual Bookshare membership. You don't have to go through your school. You can just go to bookshare.org, click sign up and click individual. And um, you can, you know, there's a uh, process for signing up. You do still need to provide proof of disability somehow, but there are several ways of doing that if you're uh, child uh, or if you as an individual are part of the National Library Service or Learning Ally or um, we can get the proof of disability from there or we have a form on our website you can download and print and take to your doctor or a, a vision specialist or uh, some other teacher or somebody you work with somebody who can verify that your child has a print disability you can um, scan that and email that to us um, the other option that and this is actually what I recommend in a lot of cases. This is where you get a hybrid of the best of all worlds is teachers, if you have an organizational account for Bookshare and you've added your students as members to that Bookshare account, they can actually upgrade those organizational memberships that you've created for them on your organization. They can log into them using the, the login info you assign them and they can upgrade them if they want to um, with your help, with their parents' help, or independently if they're um, older. They can still upgrade to individual memberships for free. And what that does is that copies their proof of disability from the organization 
and enables them to access books independently, choose their own books, and also allows them to get books that you've assigned with for them or downloaded that for them, um, whether you're doing it through reading lists or downloading them in, uh, in some other way. And I actually recommend that as being the best of both worlds because then you actually end up with an individual account that gives you full access, but also a link to the school so that the teacher can uh, help get books when necessary. That is usually what I recommend, but there's all kinds of different reasons why someone might try just an organization or just an individual account. Um, and it gets confusing because there's a lot of different ways to get to the same end result. But I think that um, for most schools, I would start with um, an organization account, add your students, and if students show interest and want to do more with the account, then you can help them um, transition to a, an individual account that's also part of your organization. The important thing here is that there's different types of accounts depending on the needs of your individual student. Everybody's going to have a different preference. Um, so moving on, um, we should be on the next slide now. We should be on ways to read on audio. Is that what everybody's seeing here? We click next. Anybody with me? Yep. That's okay. Yep. Okay. Just checking. Okay. Um, actually, before we go into the different ways to read, I will pause again and ask for questions because I realize I threw a lot of account info at you. Um, I can pause and if anybody has questions, I'm, I'm happy to take them. You can type them in or. Okay. That's good. And if you change your mind too, feel free to chime in. All right. So now you've got your, you've gone to the website, you've signed up, you've got your account, you and your students are ready to, to get some books. So we have different ways to read our books because they're eBooks. The nice part is you can read them in different ways. Um, typically, uh, most of our reading tools and apps allow you to listen to the books. Um, this is an electronic voice, not a human voice, but um, the electronic voices are usually quite clear. Um, different uh, tools for reading our books may have different electronic voices. Um, so you can listen to the books with just audio only or a lot of our uh, Reading tools have the ability to listen to the book while the text is also displayed on the, on the screen. And you can actually experience multimodal reading of having the book, you can listen to the book being read aloud as the text um, is being highlighted. So each word as it's being spoken can be highlighted for you. And there's different types of readers who really do enjoy that approach to reading. Also, if you're someone who, um, likes to listen to books, but you also like to access text with um, a screen reader or braille or enlargement, you can, the, having the audio and text together allows you to check things like layout, it can, you can check spellings of character names, etc. So that's the nice thing about our ebook format is that even if you have audio, it's not just audio that you're listening to. So you can download an audio only version of our book in MP3 if you want to, and a lot of people do that, but the nice part is you absolutely don't have to. You can listen to our books on our website using our web reader, which allows you to read in your browser. You can listen using various apps for uh, tablets and smartphones. And so there's a lot of different ways to access audio for our books, if that's the kind of reader you are. So next slide, please. If you, have, if you are a Braille reader, or if you work with students who are, um, there's a couple different ways to access Braille. If you want hard copy, we don't actually provide, we're not going to send you a, a paper book, but there are ways to convert our books into hard copy Braille if you have the right um, material. If you have access to a Braille printer, which, or as they call it, a Braille embosser, um, you can basically emboss our books for your students in hard copy that way. And we have a BRF format that you can choose to download from our website. Uh, BRF is Braille Ready Format. And you can, that file is already ready to go. It's pre-formatted for Braille. You can load that into your um, embossing software and, and emboss the Braille that way. Or sometimes if you want um, to edit up the document or if you want to take care of the transcribing yourself or if you want something a little kind of nicer quality, you can actually download the Word document version.
will pick up there for a minute. Oops. Okay, we lost you there for a second. <laughs> Hello, Allison? Can you hear me? Okay, is this good? Okay, there we go. I am really sorry about that. I little little hiccup there. I got a call coming in. I muted my phone, but didn't put it on D&D. So there you go. The call came in and it dis derailed all my audio. Sorry about that, guys. All right. We are back to talking about Braille. All right, so hard copy Braille. Um, you can emboss it either from a BRF or a Word document, depending on your preferences. I will say that our our BRF files are not transcribed by human, so quality, um, your mileage may vary, vary when it comes to quality. But if you're concerned, you're welcome to download a Word document and do some of the cleanup um, yourself before embossing. There's also a way to order hard copy books from uh, third party companies if you want to take our files and have them embossed elsewhere. If you are not um, a paper kind of person, we can go to the next slide and talk about electronic Braille. This is, I think, the more popular option for Braille access among our books. Um, our books can be read on electronic Braille displays, um, on a note taker, like a Braille note or a Braille sense, um, or if you use a Braille display with a device like a computer or an iPhone or iPad, you can read the, our books using an app. Um, you can use one of the Bookshare compatible apps on your tablet or smartphone and then have the book's text displayed in Braille on your display that way. And I think that's how a lot of people are accessing um, Braille materials at this point is through one of those electronic means for getting um, books in Braille. So. There again, you can download a Braille, a pre-formatted Braille file to transfer to a note taker, or you can just use an app with your Braille display that would attach to a mainstream device. So we'll go on to the next slide, please. That kind of covers our, our Braille options. I will go on to magnification. That's the, that's the third uh, type of reader we tend to have who uses Bookshare is somebody who wants to read text visually, but prefers um, a different display or needs some magnification or enlargement or different contrast. That is also an option with our books because they are e-text. You ultimately can look at the text and you can pull that up, whether it's on your computer or your smartphone or your tablet, and you can change the color, the contrast, the highlighting, the size, the style, et cetera, um, to make that. Um, more usable to you. As I mentioned, the Mat Connect and the Prodigy devices, there's a couple ways to get them to work with our books. Um, they have their own uh, Bookshare app on those devices, but you, since they're Android tablets, you can also install our uh, Go Read app or the Dolphin Easy Reader app to read our books if um, you have a magnification user who would like to go that route. Um, you can also download the Word document version of our books um, onto a computer and print a large print hard copy if you prefer. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to get magnification um, if your students need that. And there again, if you want to combine these uh, media, you absolutely can. If you have someone who likes to read in large print until their eyes get tired, they can turn on um, those text-to-speech in a lot of our reading tools and listen. If you have someone who is um, you know, who is a Braille reader, maybe a newer Braille reader who wants to listen some if they get stuck on a, um, a new sign they're not able to read. You could certainly jump between the different reading modes in most of our reading tools, depending on what works for uh, you and your students. So let's move on to our next slide, please. I'll pause here real quick and see if we have questions again. I kind of covered the different ways to read our books, the different um, media depending on the kind of reader you are so we have a, question have about that? a comment it's sure. um, Sandra she says I find many Braille files have errors in page numbering the page number often repeats within a Braille page this requires a lot of time for editing 
Yes, yes, for sure. So yes, we have, that is one of our known issues in our Braille files. So um, our BRF files are basically a quickly translated um, Braille file that is converted by a machine. It's actually basically converted by our, our conversion tool, which is a pro or computer program rather than an actual human. So it does occasionally have errors because you're not having an actual transcriber take a look at the file and, and fix those um, quirks like repeated page numbers. So unfortunately that does happen. Um, I have to say particularly for textbooks, I don't know that I'd recommend our BRF files, our Braille files, although they will work in a pinch for most uh, recreation and, or reading and novels um, because they are, textbooks have a lot of formatting, formatting and a lot of page numbering and a lot of things that are really important for a student but are not going to convert well by basically a piece of technology that's that's transcribing into braille rather than a person um, if you're really stuck i would recommend depending on what device you're reading on sandra and i don't know if you're doing a a, a note taker or you're using a braille display with a different device like a, a tablet or computer but depending on the device you're reading on i would try either our daisy text format or our word doc format i would try reading though uh, reading those formats with your braille display and then your braille display will actually do the braille conversion itself and it will be a much cleaner experience in most cases um, so that's what i would recommend if you're really finding that it's a, a barrier for you with the uh, formatting and page numbering issues so hopefully that helps gotcha okay so you're pa you're pairing with shows for students yes so if you are transcribing I would give a try to our Word document version instead and bring that into Duxbury and clean it up. And it will be a nice cleaner copy um, than the BRF, unfortunately. Yeah, you're welcome. She said, thanks for the tip. Okay, good, good. Yeah, unfortunately, I wish I had better news about our BRF. We, we are continuously refining the conversion software to try to make it better. But at the end of the day, it's not as smart as a human transcriber and it's going to have some errors. So, all right, give that a try. Hopefully it works and feel free to. Um, uh, contact us if you're still having problems if you get stuck. So, all right, moving on to our next slide, which should be searching, searching for books. Um, there's many ways to search for our books. You can simply go to our website and type in the search box on every um, a title or an author or an ISBN or a keyword. Um, in the search results that come up, you have different options. Um, if your search results are sorted as a table, there's a table view and a list view. But if you're sorting your, if you have them showing as a table, there's a column in the search results table called features. And features is important to um, a lot of uh, professionals in the blindness field because the features will tell you if the book has images or if it has image descriptions. That can be important because uh, certainly some, not, you know, some blind and low vision people still want to look at the images and some people who don't see the images want descriptions and we do not have images for all our books and we do not have image descriptions for all our books but we try to have as many of both as possible because that is the best most accessible experience of course for our users so when you're looking at search results check that feature column to find out the image status um, also, when you're searching, you have um, in your search results, you'll see an option that says add to reading list, which is if you're creating lists of books to assign to students, that's where you um, add the books to the various reading lists that you share with students. Um, also, if you want to search um, for certain like recommended books, there's a link on our website that says browse. It can be found on every Bookshare, every page of our site has a browse link. And that gives you a plethora of information. It's got some uh, special collection recommendations for children's books, for picture books, for um, high interest, low reading level books, um, New York Times children's bestsellers, and Newbery Award winners, and Caldecott winners, and Snyder Family Book Award. A lot of things, if you're having trouble just knowing what to share with your students to read, there's a lot, a lot of info on this browse page. Also our um, newspapers and periodicals can be found on this page as well. Um, it also has a link to some of our leveled readers, which are 
you know, different grade level specific um, recommended reading. And also on this page, you can view some of our special collections of books that, um, that our staff has put together uh, for folks who want to find good, qual high quality books for their students. So, and the other option is our advanced search page. If you're not quite finding what you're looking for with our, our simple search, you can advance search. There's a lot of options if you click on advanced search. I won't go into all of them here, but the important things to note is this is the advanced search page is where you would search by category. If you want to look for a certain, um, you know, if you're looking for mystery novels or biographies or uh, political science, this is where you do those searches. Also, if you're looking for books in a certain language, um, you can do that um, narrowing and searching here. Also, on the advanced search page, if you are looking for a certain re like grade level, that's where you do those searches is on our advanced search page if you're trying to only look for third grade books, for example. So that covers searching. Uh, say next slide, please. All right, so NIMAC. NIMAC books, um, I won't go into all the NIMAC details because that could cover an entire webinar in itself. I will say um, NIMAC stands for National Instructional Materials Access Center. Um, that is a repository set up by the federal government um, in the US for publishers to share accessible versions of their textbooks for K-12. And Bookshare can access the files uploaded to the NIMAC from publishers. So the good news about that is um, we can often make books, you know, textbooks available rather quickly in accessible formats. Uh, the downside is there's a lot of restrictions around NIMAC books um, caused by the federal legislation that set up the NIMAC. Um, so what that means for uh, teachers and the professionals is that our book, you can get NIMAC books from us and download them for your students, but we're only allowed to share those books with students who have IEPs. That's public school issued IEPs. So um, that applies to most of our students, but obviously not all. So while your student may qualify for Bookshare in general because they have a print disability, they may not qualify to get the NIMAC books if they don't have an IEP. Now, typically most students with visual impairments parents are on IEPs or ought to be, but if there are some that aren't um, for other reasons, then they, will not be able to access the NIMAC books. You can request a book. Um, if there's one in that we only have a NIMAC copy available and you have a student with a 504 or, or another type of non-IEP setup, you can request the book and in the comments field of your request form, uh, note that the student does not have an IEP. However, it will take us a little longer. It will not be a quick turnaround because we will have to actually buy the book, scan it ourselves, and make it available, which we are happy to do because we absolutely want as many people to have access to their books as possible, particularly textbooks for students. Unfortunately, though, we, since we have to actually make the accessible copy of the book ourselves, it just takes some time. So I'm um, just sharing that info. Also with uh, NIMAC books, um, Students on individual accounts can't access them directly themselves. They need to be shared through an organizational account. So you as teachers and sponsors will need to log into your Bookshare account and either share the book with the student through a reading list or download it for them yourself. Just, just one of the other um, rules related to the NIMAC legislation. So um, there again, um, Aside from NIMAC, if there's a book you're not seeing on our website at all, actually, as I, I forgot to mention on the previous slide, if there's a book your student needs for school and you're not seeing it on our website, if you go to our Help Center link on our website, there's a link to request a book. So uh, that's always an option. All right, so that's where we are with NIMAC and book requesting and textbooks. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about in more detail of the different ways to read our books specifically. The most common way that people read our books, but certainly not the only way, but the easiest and most common way to read our books is 
using our tool called Web Reader. It's also called Read now sometimes. Read. So our Web Reader is designed for use on computers. That's a PC, a Mac, or a Chromebook. I would not recommend it on a tablet or smartphone. It is designed for a computer. You um, typically, if you're in a Chromebook district, um, this is what you'll be using most often. This is a web reader. What's nice about it is when you log into Bookshare, instead of downloading a book, you search for the book and click a link that says read now. It's usually in shows up in blue on most browsers. Um, you click read now, you wait a few seconds and the book opens up right in your web browser. It'll look much like a web page. Um, the advantage to that, it is very quick and easy. The downside is web reader because of copyright laws is not available directly to the sponsors, which is our, our word for teachers and staff. It's only available to the member accounts, which is the student accounts. So I get calls often where, you know, teachers will come up and say, wait, I don't see read now. I don't see read now. And I'm like, well, you're in your sponsor account. You want to be in the student's account. So I won't go through every step, but what you'd need to do in that case, if your students need to use web reader, is in your sponsor account, you can create a username and password for your student, and they would use that username and password to log in and open the books using Web Reader. Um, um, you typically, if you want to, if you're if you're needing to test and help a student, if you can um, log in with the student and explore the Web Reader or you can add a demo student to your account if you need to test with it, but typically you don't have direct access to WebReader as a sponsor. Um, so you create a username and password for your student. Keep in mind that if you've created the username and password for the student and they have an organizational account only, that they can only open books that you've shared with them through the reading list or that you've downloaded for them in the past. That's where the advantage or disadvantage, depending on your perspective, to the organization account. And not to make everyone more confused, I'll just mention that when you're creating username and password, it's only for students to access books you've shared with them. The only way they can view the whole collection is if they've upgraded to an individual uh, Bookshare account. So, uh, so uh, going back to Web Reader, as I said, so when you log in and you click the Read Now link or you press Enter on it, that will open your book in your browser. The Web Reader enables you to both listen to and interact with the text on your screen. So if you're a visual reader, you can look at the text, you can enlarge the font and change the color contrast, the background color and such. If you want to listen to it, there's a play button on this page that you can uh, press to get audio. The audio will read the book aloud and also highlight the text as it's been being spoken. If you are using a braille display or a screen reader to access your computer, then you don't have to use the built-in text-to-speech. You could just use your screen reader or your braille display to read the text on the page. So that's, um, that's the basic overview of web reader. Um, it, the advantage, like I said, is it's a, it's a very um, basic way to open our books on a computer. I'm gonna pause real quick and see if there's questions before I move on to other platforms. All right, next slide, please. All right, so that's accessing the basics of accessing a uh, bookshare on a computer. If you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to access on a mobile device, um, I'll start here with iOS, which iOS refers to iPhones, iPads, or sometimes iPod touches, although there's fewer and fewer of them out in the world these days. But um, So yes, on your iPhones and your iPads and your iPods, um, you will want to use an app rather than using web reader. There are several apps, and I list them all in the PowerPoint. Um, some are free, some are paid, some work better with different situations than others, but all of them have an option to listen to a book and also read the text of the book. Um, 
I break it down in a spreadsheet later, this PowerPoint, um, specifically which reading tools offer which features. But the important thing to note is that if you're going to read on an iPhone or iPad, you want to get an app. The most commonly used free Bookshare app is called Dolphin Easy Reader. It's dolphin spelled just like the animal. Um, that's an app you'd get in the Apple App Store. It's free. It'll let you literally log into the Bookshare website from inside the app. So you, instead of going to Bookshare on your iPad, you'll open the Dolphin Easy Reader app. There's a Bookshare option there. It lets you log into your Bookshare account. And there you view and search and, for books and download. And then you read and listen to them all inside the app. Um, that's probably the most common free app. Another free option is um, the iBooks app that is on uh, iPads, I, uh, iPhones, and Macs. iBooks can open one of our book formats called EPUB. That's E-P-U-B. Um, the advantage of using EPUB and with iBooks, the app is actually called Books now. I have to say iBooks or Books. It used to be called iBooks. That was a change that Apple did. They changed the name of their iBooks app to Books. Um, but nevertheless, that app will open our EPUB. What's nice about it is some people who are reading our text visually like the layout of iBooks better than some of the other apps. Also, if you're a Braille display user, um, you can use um, a Braille display to read the text in iBooks as well. Those, so those are co most common free options. There's a few other free apps like Speech Central and Capti. Um, those are less commonly used, but they also would still work. I would say Capti typically is more for low vision users. It does not work reliably with voiceover, but it certainly can work um, if you're using the, the screen text. Um, same with Speech Central. Um, if you want a paid app with a few more options, uh, a really popular app is called Voice Dream Reader. That's D-R-E-A-M, dream, like dreaming at night. Um, that is a very nice app for iOS that it allows you to purchase and download additional reading voices if you, you know, are, want a certain uh, type of listening experience. It's got a lot of good bookmarking and some annotating features. Your mileage with accessibility of the uh, note-taking annotation features will vary, but they are available in Voice Dream Reader. It's got, um, it's usually, they, they change the price depending on what sale they're running at the time, but it's usually about a $15 app. And people really do seem to like uh, Voice Dream Reader if you want to go the paid app route. So there's also an app called Read2Go um, that's a paid app. I tend not to recommend it for new users because it's an older app that's not being updated right now. But certainly if you are a Read2Go user currently, it still does work on most devices still, but it's not being updated. I just mentioned it because everybody um, uh, asked about it, so I thought I'd mention it here. So the main point of this is to say that there are many ways to read on an iPhone or an iPad. Just the important thing is to remember to use an app rather than going directly to our um, read now link on our site. All right, next slide, please. Um, Android. If you are an Android uh, smartphone person or an Android tablet user, um, there's different apps um, to read Bookshare books. There again, you definitely want to use an app rather than our website, but there are free options. There is a version of Dolphin Easy Reader for Android, very much like the one for iPhones and iPads. Um, Bookshare, we also have our own app that we've created for Android called Go Read. Um, that's just the word go and read. Um, it's free in the Google Play Store. Um, both those apps, Dolphin Easy Reader for Android and Go Read, um, will read our books. They let, allow you to um, view text and listen to audio, et cetera. Um, one nice thing about Go Read is it interfaces with the reading lists on our website. That's one thing I like about that. So I won't spend a ton more time on Android because honestly, it's very similar to iOS. The app names are just different, but it, the basic concept is about the same. But just know that if you are someone who prefers that platform, there's still reading options for you. Next slide, please. And then lastly, if you are neither iOS nor Android and you prefer Kindles, um, 
Kindle uh, reading has varied over the years for Bookshare books. Um, the Amazon uh, Kindle store um, has blocked our Go Read app from its app store. So there hasn't historically been a lot of reading options for Kindle, but the, the Kindle Fire devices will play our books um, on our website. Our web reader that, I, that is typically used on computers, that will run in, in the Kindle, in the, the browser on the Kindle is called Silk, which the important thing to know about that is just that if you go to the Bookshare website on your Kindle and use the Read Now web reader link to open a book, it will have audio. It does not have highlighting, but it will read the book aloud to you um, and display the text. So there is that option for Kindle Fires. It works fairly well, um, but Kindle options are a little limited with the nature of Amazon and book access. So, all right, next slide, please. And we're make, making our way through here. So reading tools, here I have a spreadsheet. It's an Excel uh, table of different reading tools and their available features. I tried to pick um, some of the top most commonly requested features and I laid out for you here which reading tools offer those features. Whether you're looking for bookmarking or image, um, image availability or if you're looking for different voice options or braille access or enlargement, this is all laid out in this table and I think Conchita is going to have a way for folks to get copies of this PowerPoint afterwards. And I just included this here because it's, I've thrown a lot of different names and terms and, and, and bits of information here. So this lays out basically what different reading tools will get the different um, tasks done that you or your students may need. So, all right, next slide, please. Um, this is uh, an overview of some different helpful links, um, how to get to our help center. You're always welcome to look at the help center on our website for answers to commonly asked questions. We also have a learning center link with a lot of video tutorials um, that show some of the most um, common, you know, answer some of the, basically demonstrates some of the most common features of our website and our various reading tools. I really recommend checking that out or sharing that with your colleagues because it's a very comprehensive uh, overview of demos. There's also some downloadable flyers and some links to our past webinars on this page. That pretty much sums it up. If you go to the, the next slide, please, I've got some contact info here. And you can always email, everybody will get an email with the PowerPoint. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And basically, if you have questions, um, feel free to contact us. Uh, so you can always reach us by email, support at bookshare.org. Um, that's usually um, a really quick and efficient way to reach us. Uh, I answer a lot of those questions or one of my other uh, colleagues in our support team. If you want to call, our number is 650-352-0198. We're on Pacific time, so that's not always convenient for East Coast teachers, but nevertheless, we do our best. You can always leave a voicemail. And um, that um, there's also a contact us link on our website as well. If you can't remember the email address and want to leave, shoot us a message, that's also possible. We're always happy to, to help answer questions because I realize that there are a lot of different options. The, I mean, the advantage of bookstores, there's so many different ways to read it, it, to meet the needs of so many diverse learners. The downside is there's so many different ways to read for so many diverse learners. So <laughs> as teachers I'm, and parents, I'm sure it can be confusing to keep track of all the options. For, so we definitely want to make it as easy as possible to demystify that for you and get you and your students set up um, um, with the best reading tool that works for them. So do I have more questions before we wrap up? It doesn't look like we have any questions, um, but thank you so much, Allison, for your presentation. That was a lot of useful information. Um, You're welcome. Video is going to be posted on our YouTube page. So if you sub subscribe to the Maryland School for the Blind page, um, you will get notification on the video. 
And if people can please fill out the survey that's in the chat box, um, you can get a certificate for contact hours for this webinar. So thank you again, Allison. Um, and yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. I, I'll just ask if there was anything I, if there's anything I didn't cover that um, you would like to see in a future presentation or that you'd still like, you know, more information or have more questions about, feel, please feel free to let me know or let Conchita know or, um, you know, drop an email to that uh, support email address because I definitely would love to get everybody, you know, questions answered and the, the most helpful info as possible. So, and thank you. Uh, Kachina for inviting me today. Yeah, of course. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Have a great rest of your day.